welcome to our February 7th, 2019 edition of Newsline. I'm Brittany Hamilton alongside Tyler Head. Today our top story is snow removal in Brandon. And in sports, we'll be taking a look at the ACC Cougars hockey team. Thank you, Tyler. I'm joined now by Justin Langan from the Weather Center. Justin, what's it looking like right now? Well, Brittany, there is an extreme cold warning in effect, which means frostbite could occur in minutes. The freezing weather is affecting humans and felines alike. Fluffy the cat from Montana is making headlines after being found essentially frozen, buried in snow. They took Fluffy to a vet clinic where he was thawed using warm water, blow dryers, and blankets. The owner says Fluffy will now be an indoor cat. Back to you, Brittany. Thank you, Justin. Brandon has received a lot of snowfall in the past few weeks, keeping the city very busy with snow removal. Newsline's Marshall Littlefield has more. Thank you, Brittany. Since February 1st, Brandon has received a total of 23 centimeters of snow, and the city has been working to clear the priority streets first. But now the city is moving into more residential streets and says they will be working overnight and in 24-hour periods until the snow is cleared. The city says that after completing the residential streets, they will be moving on to the medians and boulevards in order to clear off the piles of snow and restore driver's sight lines. In order to check if your street has been cleared or when it is going to be cleared, you can check snowmap.brandon.ca for more information. For Newsline, I'm Marshall Littlefield. Thank you, Marshall. Those rising mountains of snow are being matched by plunging temperatures. That's making life difficult for the many international students at Assiniboine Community College who have to wait outdoors for the bus. Now ACC is building them a bus shelter at the Victoria Avenue campus. We asked the students how they feel about finally getting some protection from the elements. It's a lot colder, so these kind of situations is way better. That's a good idea because many students stay outside for a long time when they are waiting for bus. Oh, it's good. It's uh, windy from last two weeks. Uh, it's helpful to students waiting there. We, have, we need bus shelter because it is very cold outside. We really need it <laughs> because the climate is going so extremely cold, so we need it. A 26-year-old man was arrested on Wednesday morning after a traffic stop on the 300 block of Louise Avenue. The man was discovered to have a Canada-wide driving prohibition and was released on promise to appear in court on April 19th. A 43-year-old Brandon man was arrested after allegedly uploading child pornography to a social media page. After his account was suspended and forwarded to the police, a search was executed on his property. During the search, police found more pornography on his other electronic devices. The man will be appearing in court on April 4th. A new scam is going around to Bell MTS customers. The scam is a text that appears to be coming from yourself and mentions an issue with the last month's billing and that there will be a refund. The texts come with a link that customers can click and where scammers can steal personal information. Bell MTS is saying that the texts are not coming from the company. The communications manager for Bell MTS says that if you receive one of these text messages, to delete it. Westman Communications has announced $300,000 of network enhancements for Swan River. The upgrades will allow customers to have high-speed internet, digital TV, and home phone services, according to WCG President Dave Baxter. The network upgrade will be completed by late spring. It has been a tough harvest for Manitoba potato growers and has now led to an even tougher storage season. Growers are having issues with storing potatoes because of the rains and frost during harvest season. The weather delayed the harvest by freezing the ground and making it tough to dig up potatoes. Most of the potatoes were frost damaged and that is leading to them breaking down in storage and rotting. That's all for your local news. Up next is Cougars Den, but first, here's what our markets are doing.
welcome to the Cougars Den. I'm Brittany Hamilton, and joining me today, as usual, is ACC Cougars Athletics Director, Beth Clark. Beth, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Let's start off with a recap of this past weekend. How did our teams fare? Well, our women's hockey team was the only team uh, to play this last weekend, but they were at a tournament in Thunder Bay, and um, it was a really telling weekend for the team. They were ranked number three going in, played the number two and the number one team, and uh, Thunder Bay was ranked just one above us. We did end up beating them, uh, and so that could have some impacts on rankings. We haven't seen the results yet, but um, that could be really interesting, so t stay tuned on that. And then uh, the game versus Minot, the team lost. The game versus Rainy River, they won, so um, some exciting things for them in the future for sure. So with these results, how do things look for potential playoffs for the volleyball teams? Well, volleyball teams host their last league games this weekend against Red River. The men's team have actually uh, solidified their number four seed for playoffs, but uh, the women's team, it's, it's a weekend up for grabs. Red River and our Cougars are uh, fighting for that number three and four so spot, so um, it could go either way this weekend, and I'm sure the, the girls are amped up for that. There are some exciting days ahead for our teams and our athletes. We had a chance to meet one of Cougars volleyball players, Here's Marshall Littlefield. Joining me now is one of our ACC Cougar Athletes women volleyball players, Libero Jordana Chartrand. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm from Brandon, Manitoba. Grew up here and I played volleyball for four years at uh, Crocus Plains High School. And I played club volleyball with Westman Volleyball Club. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, your position is Libero. Can you describe that position for us? Uh, there's a lot of pressure being a libero, but it's good pressure, more or less. Uh, it, it's like a drive to like always go for the ball. Why did you decide to join the Cougars women's volleyball team? Well, I was really interested like in the program, so obviously I got in and then I got the opportunity to play for the team, so that, that was amazing. And to ongo my education while playing volleyball, even better. Tell us a little bit about what your experience has been like playing for the Cougars. It's been an overall great experience, like the whole transition from high school and club volleyball to college, it's amazing. Uh, what would you say some of the highlights have been for you being involved in athletics here at ACC? Uh, one of our highlights, well, one of like my highlights would probably be from uh, two week weekends ago when we played the number one ranked team in our league, CMU. We swept them both Friday and Saturday, and on the Friday game, I got 22 digs. I was pretty impressed oh, with myself awesome. on that. Yeah. yeah. You should be proud of that. Yes. <laughs> uh, what are your hopes for your team going forward in the remainder of the season? Uh, I hope our dynamic stays strong, like moving forward, and I just hope, like our goal is to make it to Final Four. Well, we wish you all the best of luck here at ACC in both your schoolwork and with the Cougars. Thanks for joining us. Let's go back to Brittany and Beth. Thanks for that, Marshall. And on each of these segments, we like to honor ACC's Athlete of the Week. Who have you got for us this week? This week is Kenzie Hyde. She is an assistant captain for our women's hockey team, and she was a really solid player for us this weekend. She's got, uh, you know, she moves a puck well. She's really solid on the ice, and she's a leader. And she was a big reason why, you know, the teams came away, or the team came away with two wins this weekend. So, um, kudos to her. And which member of the coaching staff are we profiling today? Today it's Mark Murray. Uh, Mark has been with our program now for a couple of years. He was uh, an assistant coach before com becoming head coach last year, and then again this year. And um, you know that team for women's soccer, this has been their best year. They're in the middle of futsal season, so he's done a great job. We are near the end of our time today. What Cougars action can we look forward to this coming weekend? Uh, as I mentioned, our volleyball teams host Red River College on Friday night and Saturday, and then. Our women's hockey team are on the road to Wisconsin-Eau Claire, so that's it for Cougar Action this weekend. Well, this weekend looks to be very busy. We'll be back next week to recap the scores and standings and bring you more ACC Cougars news. Beth, once again, where can we catch these games online and keep up with scores? We'll be live streaming the volleyball games on Facebook, and we have Twitter, we've got Instagram, and of course our website, assinboyne.net slash athletics. So keep up to date any way you can. Thanks, Beth, for joining us today. I'm Brittany Hamilton, and we will see you next week on the Cougars Den right here on Newsline. Stay tuned. Justin Langan is up next with your Newsline weather.
south from the Weather Center is Justin Langan. Justin, what's it looking like right now? Crisp, cloudy, and cold. There will be a weather system heading across Brandon over the next few days that will bring cold weather, sunny skies, and more importantly, no snow. Currently in Brandon, it is cloudy at minus 31, but feeling more like minus 44 with the wind chill. This evening will be partly cloudy at minus 25, feeling like minus 36. Overnight is going to be partly cloudy at minus 31, feeling more like minus 43 with wind chill. Taking a look at your five day forecast. Friday will be sunny with a high of minus 24 and a low of minus 31. Saturday will be a high of minus 21 and a low of minus 32 and sunny. Sunday will be sunny and a high of minus 21 and a low of minus 25. Monday will be cloudy at a high of minus 16 and a low of minus 25. Tuesday will be sunny and a high of minus 18 and a low of minus 25. Looking around Westman, Winnipeg, it's cloudy at minus 23. Portage is seeing some light snow at minus 26. Dauphin is partly cloudy at minus 31. Nipois is minus 27 and mostly cloudy. Carberry is minus 27 and cloudy. Killarney is cloudy at minus 27 as well. Minidosa is mostly cloudy at minus 28. And Verdon is mostly cloudy at minus 28 as well. Your normal high for today is minus 10 and the normal low is minus 21. The record high for today was plus 4.4 in 1954 and the record low was minus 37.4 in 1994. Once again, currently in Brandon, it is cloudy at minus 31 but feeling more like minus 44 with the wind chill. At this point, Brittany, I'm numb to the cold weather. Me too, Justin. Thank you. Tyler Head is up next with your Newsline Sports after this short break. Hello, I'm Tyler Head and I've got your Newsline Sports. Our very own women's hockey team is anxious to get back on ice and reclaim victory. The ACC Cougars camera <laughs> hockey team 12 game winning streak was snapped last week when they squared off against the Minot State Beavers. The Cougars suffered a 3 to 1 loss on Sunday. The Cougars will be visiting the University of Wisconsin on Saturday evening when they play at the Hobbs Arena. The game starts at 8.15. It's another home game for our Brandon Wheat Kings. The Wheaties were handed a devastating 7-3 loss by the Saskatoon Blades on Tuesday night. Brandon is hoping to get back into the winning circle when they host the Swift Current Broncos. The game will be played at the Westoba Place tomorrow evening starting at 7.30. The Wheat Kings are facing the visiting Saskatoon Blades on their home turf on Sunday afternoon. The Wheat City is getting geared up to host the Tournament of Champions. This is a chance for young and upcoming hockey players to showcase their skills and the tournament is to run by an experienced group of volunteers. All teams are eligible to enter but are advised to enter quickly because positions do fill up fast. Week 1 begins today and lasts all weekend. That's all for sports. Back to you, Brittany. Thank you, Tyler. If you're still looking for love before Valentine's Day, there's still an opportunity for you to find that soulmate. There will be a speed dating event that is being held at the Double Decker here in Brandon tomorrow from 5 to 7.30. You can date up to 20 people ranging from 18 to 30 years old. Tickets can be purchased at the door. What do you think about the speed dating, Tyler? Have you ever tried it before? I haven't really tried it because I would like to do this thing, but unfortunately I'm too old. I'm 35, so I think that's discrimination. No, I'm, just, I'm just joking around. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you'll have to wait a little bit there, yeah, Tyler. A little too That's it. <laughs> That's it for our February 7th, 2019 edition of Newsline. I'm Brittany Hamilton alongside Tyler Head. We'll see you next time.